Hello and welcome to episode 19 of the Beginner Guide to One Piece. The Seven Warlords Explained. The Seven Warlords, or the Shichi Bukai in Japanese, the full title being Oka Shichi Bukai, literally meaning the Royal Seven Military Seas, but are referred to as the Seven Warlords of the Sea in the English Funimation dub. The Seven Warlords are seven powerful and notorious pirates who have allied themselves with the world government. Even though the warlords do work for the government, they typically do not show them any respect and normally do as they please in whatever they want. They normally accept the position of warlord due to the fact that a warlord is given protection from the navy. The majority of the warlords are made up of New World veterans and who have met or fought the Nyoko. There is an enormous range in bounty between the members due to the different circumstances and under which they were recruited into the Seven Warlords with Edward Weevil, who had a bounty of 480 million, and Blackbeard, who had no bounty at all when he joined, the Warlords do not get along at all. In fact, the idea of the Warlords working as a team is said to be unthinkable, due to the fact that they all have a strong sense of pride and barely have any respect for each other, if any respect at all. The only two warlords who seem to be okay with the idea of working together with other warlords are Don Quixote Do Flamingo and Bartholomew Kuma. A pirate may choose to become a warlord if a space become vacant, which means either one of the warlords must be defeated resign or be expelled from the group. A great example of them resigning is Jinbei and one of them being defeated or expelled is Crocodile. However, in order for one to become a warlord, once this position opens up, one must be able to exhibit their strength against other pirates while choosing to pledge loyalty to the world government. They pledge loyalty by making a pact with the Gorosei, the heads of the world government as far as we are aware. If the pirate in question can be used as Intimidation, the position may be offered to them. If no other pirate has accepted the position or proven to be more of an asset to the government, as expected, most members were already notorious pirates with high bounties, but even relatively unknown pirates can be admitted if they accomplish a feat to prove their strength. Blackbeard victory over Porgus DA and Trafalgar laws attaining and sending of 100 hearts to Marine headquarters. Being a warlord does mean that you can be called on to help the government in times of need. A great example of this is during the War of the Best when two help in the fight with Whitebeard and his pirate crew, the Whitebeard pirate, the Navy called for all seven warlords to take part in the battle against the Whitebeard pirate. However, while they were there, they didn't really follow the orders of the world government as they are not really required to follow their orders they were only really required to show up and take part in the battle, but they all really took part in the battle to as much of a level as they wanted and only fought when they felt like fighting. The great example of this is Mihawk rarely engaged in combat besides for when he attacked Whitebeard and he fought Vista and, and did test Luffy skills. You didn't really see much of Mihawk fighting. He definitely wasn't openly trying to straight up murder Whitebeard. In fact, he didn't really seem too interested in the war at all. He really just wanted to test his own strength against some of these very powerful pirates from the New World. Being a warlord is not all about power. We are aware of this due to the fact that Crocodile was defeated by pre timeship Luffy in the Alabasta arc, while Luffy needed to use Gear Force when he fought the Flamingo post timeship to defeat him. Meaning, Doflamingo and Crocodile are clearly on two completely different levels in terms of strength. We also have a warlord like Buggy. Buggy himself isn't very powerful, yet, in fact, he is actually not even the strongest person in his own crew. He does, however, have a large army of level 6 prisoners and impel down escapees following him who are all incredibly powerful. Though, due to his incredibly powerful crew, Buggy was given the position of Warlord. Now, I hope you guys learned something new about Warlords today. I didn't necessarily cover everything, but I hope you guys learned something new about them and have a better basic understanding of what a Warlord is. But guys, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Leave a like. 
If you have anything more you want to offer, any extra tidbits or fun facts about the Warlord you want to drop in the comment section, feel free to do so. And above all else, guys, have a great day. This is the One Piece Nation signing out. And remember to leave your request for the next episode of the Beginner Guide to One Piece in the, description, in the comment section down below. Not the description box, the comment section. Because I do have a couple more ideas for a couple more episodes, but I'm starting to run low. So give me a suggestion on what to talk about next week or the week after that.